Hi everyone, I'm Mike Prindle and I'm Vice President of Cloud Architecture and Security in Oracle's Global Business Units, or GBUs for short. Today I'm going to talk to you briefly about how the Oracle GBUs transform their applications with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Let's get started. First, some background on the global business units. There are eight GBUs, and each is an individual business inside of Oracle that focuses on a specific vertical market. So there's one GBU dedicated to communications, another to construction and engineering, a third to financial services, food and beverage, hospitality, and retail each have their own GBU, as do health sciences and utilities. Each GBU business combines industry-specific expertise with Oracle's extensive technology platform to provide applications that support our customers' most critical workloads and most sensitive data. Examples of these workloads include point of sale, clinical trial data management, financial transactions, and workforce management and safety. The GBUs together have a large and diverse SaaS portfolio that serves thousands of customers in all eight of the vertical markets. In the course of doing business for over a decade, the GBUs have collectively done more than 30 acquisitions including many SaaS properties. To help give you a sense of scale for the GBUs, if we took them as a whole outside of Oracle, that business would look like one of the top 10 independent software vendors in the world. So, so one of the outcomes of the success and growth of the GBUs uh, was that when we acquired a new company, we typically also acquired a new set of data centers. Uh, in fact, the GBUs were so focused on building their SaaS portfolios that we ended up with 80 different data centers uh, that were acquired all over the world. Um, and again, the scale we're talking about is hundreds of thousands of cores of compute, dozens of petabytes of storage, uh, and very complex uh, security and compliance requirements. Um, and then because these data centers were assembled by different companies, each was a unique design. Uh, there were different networks, uh, different compute hardware, different storage, uh, many different vendors uh, were used, and there were many unique IT processes. Um, and as I'm sure you can imagine over time, that led to an increase in sort of accumulated technical debt. So it wasn't necessarily a pretty picture. Um, and then on top of this infrastructure, uh, we had acquired dozens of different SaaS applications. And these applications had many different architectures, uh, they were built on many different technology stacks. Uh, some applications looked more like your traditional single tenant uh, enterprise application, uh, and some had uh, sort of more cloud native, uh, you know, modern architectures. Uh, so to net it out, we had a, you know, quite a mix of applications running on a set of, you know, very different infrastructures. So our challenge um, was to consolidate, simplify, and streamline uh, this massively diverse set of applications and um, and again, these are apps that support our customers' most important workloads uh, and which uh, and, and includes their most important data and which require extremely high levels of security and compliance. It was hard to know where to even start. So how did we start? Um, first, we established a set of principles to help us balance the desired business objectives against constraints such as time and limited resources. Thought I'd share some of those principles with you today. Our first and most important principle was to make sure that we provided business continuity for our existing customers. Our customers had to come first and we couldn't break our existing business. But on the flip side of that, we believe that our journey needed to start by moving to OCI as quickly as we possibly could. Um, we felt the transformation um, that we were attempting to do at our scale required the most modern and, and secure IaaS platform possible. Um, we also wanted to consume OCI just like any other external IaaS customer. Um, and the, the reason for that was we wanted to take advantage of, sort of the massive investment that, that Oracle was making um, within OCI. Uh, we also believe that we'd benefit from this investment well beyond the, the initial move phase. So we're setting ourselves up for success down the road. Um, we also felt strongly that moving to a new IaaS platform was an opportunity to right some of the wrongs of the past. Um, so removing the technical debt that I mentioned uh, was a very important goal for us. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that we found that sweet spot between speed and perfection. Uh, in almost all cases, we use the move as an opportunity to set us up to incrementally pay back that technical debt over a fixed period of time that was manageable. 
Um, you know, next, you know, modern cloud architecture patterns are all about giving the customer a better experience. Um, so the minimum bar for us was to treat the infrastructure as code, regardless of how modern, or in many cases, not modern, um, our applications were. Moving to OCI made this easy. And, and finally, security compliance was key for our customers. So we wanted to build on top of the strong security foundation that OCI provides. So with this set of principles, we formulated our plan um, and we wanted to understand what the likely uh, business outcomes would be. And so where we landed, um, you know, based on those principles and, and um, uh, you know, uh, our, our business uh, requirements, uh, we ended up with a pattern that looked uh, primarily like move and improve. Uh, and what we found was that with a move and improve pattern, um, we could move our applications to the OCI platform quickly um, with a small um, and contained set of changes. So it, wasn't, it wasn't a pure lift. Uh, we were gonna make some improvements, but kind of just enough. Um, and uh, we found this approach would allow us to get to OCI quickly while minimizing the upfront investment. Um, we decided that changes during the move, move phase um, had to be highly leverageable and enable us to rapidly improve our apps once we, we got to OCI. So, so there had to be a pretty significant payback um, for that initial investment that we were gonna make uh, in, in the move phase. Um, so after going through all the details, the move and improve plan seemed to check the boxes. So we started to work uh, on, or we started to work uh, to figure out how we uh, got our move going. The work we did to prepare for our move phase was pretty straightforward. Um, first, we decided to use the infrastructure as code capabilities that I mentioned uh, to assure consistency across data centers uh, and also to allow us to, to easily make changes uh, in the future that we could uh, you know, test and, and easily deploy. Uh, and then next, um, you know, we, we decided to standardize our technology stack to minimize the variation and reduce the number of third-party vendors. So in addition to just using OCI uh, compute and storage, uh, we made sure that we moved to the most current versions of Oracle Linux. Uh, we used uh, OCI's load balancer as a service. Uh, we used uh, the Oracle database as a service, and we used other past services that were delivered from OCI, uh, such as identity and access management. Um, and what we found was that in addition to the operational benefits of eliminating the complexity and variation, there are also some interesting financial outcomes that this initial move phase would unlock for us. Um, one of these was that we were able to significantly reduce our plan cap, excuse me, our plan cap expend by 80% by evacuating many of the legacy data centers quickly. We avoided having to replace aging hardware. We didn't have to replace network cores or refresh storage devices or compute resources that were falling out of support. The second benefit we realized was that we were able to reduce our third party license expense by over 40% and use fewer vendors overall. Again, these, expenses, these were expenses that we could drastically reduce just during our initial move phase. Uh, and then lastly, I want to point out one other uh, key advantage uh, that got unlocked for us when we uh, did that initial move to OCI. Um, we have a, a set of uh, existing applications in retail and hospitality that require PCI DSS certification. Um, and we were initially concerned about the time and expense uh, that we might incur to recertify these apps once we move them to OCI. But what we found was that we were able to quickly receive PCI DSS certification by a third party uh, qualified security assessor as part of our move to OCI. Essentially the security and compliance capabilities and attestations that we needed from OCI were already there and ready for us to build on. So for the Oracle Global Business Units, the benefits of simply moving to OCI were fairly dramatic. It simplified our data center operations. It improved our overall security posture. Our systems performed better and were more available. And finally, the move not only reduced our IaaS cost by more than 60%, but provided us with a world-class IaaS platform on which we could continue to improve our applications to, pro to provide better value to our customers. We've since moved on to the improved phase of our journey, which includes moving to Oracle's autonomous database. Uh, so to recap, in our, in our move journey, um, consuming OCI's Gen 2 cloud, just like an external customer, allowed us to achieve real business outcomes in a short period of time while minimizing the upfront investment. Based on our experience, I believe that moving, OCI app, or sorry, moving Oracle applications to OCI is the fastest way for you to execute your own move and improve journey to the cloud. 
Well, that's it for me. Thanks for taking the time to hear about how Oracle transformed its industry applications with the Oracle Gen 2 Cloud 